finding the family and watching the newborn tear it up. I've been doing it. Sure has been fun. It's been amazing. Really, really, really special. Well, so how many how many gigs have you done so far? Last night at Red Rocks was number six. Number six. And you do how many tunes in a given night? I think around 15. Uh, we divided the arrangement duties up among three different arrangers, and all told, I think we did 21, 22 arrangements. And so uh, tomorrow and the next night, I'm hoping to play every song over the two nights if we can make it right. work out that way. Now, who's connect, conducted tomorrow night? Uh, to my knowledge, uh, Michael Tilson Thomas. Really? That's, I mean, that's, uh, I could be wrong. I was once already today. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I was too. Uh, you know, that's what uh, my, my, uh, that's, what, that's what my knowledge is, but I've, I've learned not to rely on that. Right. It's either it's either him or Sarah Hicks. Either way, we're blessed. But we, it's yeah. Either way, it's it shows you what I know. Well. It's like right. Yeah. Just I'm somebody for the somebody ride. slaps you on the back yeah. and says, "Go." Yeah, it's a <laughs> showtime. <laughs> yeah, I know that one. Well, hell, now you know I I can't wait to get back in, to my little project, but uh, that'll be next year sometime. Have you, have you do you do you have you you have sections where you you stretch the band out? Do you have se you have sections where you stretch the orchestra out as well? Yeah, what I've been uh, telling people in, in uh, interviews and stuff is that there's three ways that we honor the spirit of improvisation. Because when, when I was first approached about doing this, I thought it was an amazing idea. But what I didn't want to do was just to have symphonic interpretations of the music. I thought, if we're going to do this, then let's also try and keep some of the spirit of how the music was played as right. opposed to just how it was written. And so the ways that we came up with were one, which is the most obvious, which is sometimes the symphony's playing an orchestrated piece and myself and Jeff Seip and, and Lincoln Schleifer uh, are improvising on top of it. Uh, other times the symphony bows out and we just go into improv land for a few minutes and then upon cue bring the symphony back in. But one of the most unique things, and it doesn't happen terribly often, but uh, the way the show opens is with this version of, of Dark Star. It's just an excerpt and I sent a tape to Stephen Bernstein, our friend who's one of the arrangers, of a tape of you guys in 1968. and. Mm -hmm. He took a four or five minute segment of you guys just improving and orchestrated it. So everything you play, everything Jerry plays, everything Phil plays, all the keyboard stuff, it's all kind of uh, assigned to different right, symphonic right, right, pieces. Yeah. So you're hearing what was originally spontaneous composition and now it's orchestration and that's the way the show opens and then uh, we segue from that into us jamming on a little bit of Dark Star, which segues into a little bit, uh, or a, a nice long version of Birdsong. And the version of Birdsong that we chose, or, or that I chose, was a version with Branford sitting in with you guys. Oh, uh, yeah, that was great. I used that, I as, that a, well. as a template and sent it to Stephen as well. So a lot of the orchestration is not only you guys improving, but Branford's improv as well. And hearing that stuff uh, connected with a, a, a symphonic arrangement is just really, really unique. I don't think I've ever heard anything quite like it. Yeah, you know, the uh, the whole reason, or a, a big reason at least, for doing this kind of thing is to, you know, to, just to hear the music, of course, uh, in another, in another setting, and all yeah. that. Yeah. But also, um, classical music is kind of in a funk these days. I mean, it was going big. Yeah. It was going strong back in the '60s when uh, when the when the day got together, and then uh, over the 
over the decades, it, it fell into a funk, and, and uh, you know, only old people would go, and the old people only wanted to hear, you know, the Romantic era, or, uh, or you know, the, the, the stuff that they play on the radio that they call classical music, which is all Baroque, real boxy, real predictable, and, uh, and that's what people think of as, uh, as classical music, when actually classical music, I mean, Bach, uh, uh, Beethoven, uh, uh, Bartok, all those guys were, were borrowing stuff that they heard from fiddle players and, and, uh, and you know, basically folk music right. or, or jazz or whatever that they were listening to and, and arranging it big, making it big. And, and other regional music from a, from right. a different part of the world, right. taking that influence and if somebody goes, oh wow, how unique, well it's because they were taking something that wasn't kind of their domain. Right. You know. And, this, this ought to shake things up a yeah, little bit. Yeah, and it was, it was the same with Gershwin and, and Irving Berlin and, and people, the, the, the pop writers. The, the, the stuff that really shook them up and turned some heads was the stuff where they would take Egyptian music or like Russian lullaby and stuff like right. that and incorporate melodies or what they called back then Negro spirituals or right, whatever right. and incorporate that into a fancy piece, you know. And, you know, uh, this, the avant-garde stuff is cool if, if you study this kind of music and you, appreciate, you can appreciate it, but it leaves most people, it goes right over most people's heads. Uh, you know, modern, what, what, what they call modern classical music, you know, goes mo right over most people's heads. They, they just can't get a handle on it. It's too, too out there you know, 12-tone music and that kind of stuff. And so part of the, uh, it, it at least occurs to me that part of the effort here, uh, part of the endeavor is to infuse some more other traditions into, into classical music and see what shakes out. And uh, yeah. one of the things that we're doing uh, with, 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 my, uh, with my piece, um, is we're going to try to get the the orchestra to to actually uh, innovate a little bit or, or or improvise, you know, play yeah. play out of their heads. So we'll give them um, we'll give the section leaders a, a few bars, you know, that's thirty two bars. I want you to build. Now uh, we're going to start with this riff. It'll advance to you guys break off. You know, the the cellos keep on that riff. The violas is in the violins go uh, uh, go to this against that uh, we're going to get uh, polyrhythmic here and then uh, and then we're going to bring them bring in some brass and you got that's one way to do it and it will have okay riff one two three and so riff one two three four in uh, riff two two three four in uh, and, and, and do it like that and it'll be different every night yeah and then another way to do it is to give them, okay, you've got uh, 16 bars here, 32 bars here. Here are the chord changes, you guys. You guys play what you want. If you want to play it all together, fine. If, if people want to Dixieland it, go ahead and Dixieland it. Um, and so that'll, be, that'll come off different. Yeah. Than that. We're getting the high sign this time to go play oh. again. Uh, we've got to keep this show Sounds on the good road. To me. So um, do we cut to B roll again here? No, just go. Just go. <laughs> okay. Just go.